do when you're really, really, really busy. You do a full rebrand of your entire website and everything else that goes along with it. Um, and that's why I'm doing this video because it's been a really long time since I've stood in front of the camera, except for today because I've done about 500 takes of this one video. So we're, um, we're getting pretty informal here. The hair's now up, the um, paperwork's been tossed to the side. There is no script on this and I'm just gonna talk to you like I always have. Um, but I wanted to shoot out a video to my mailing list because there, oh my gosh, there has been so much that has happened since the last um, vlog episode. Um, and there's been a lot of new people that have joined my mailing list and I just haven't been a nice enough person to send out another email about all this new work and um, what's coming up. So basically um, coming up is the Affordable Art Fair, um, which is from the 2nd till the 5th of June. And um, I have been working my ass off <laughs> for about a year and a half um, for multiple things, exhibitions, commissions. It's just been nuts. I am now full time in this studio. Um, I'm in here, oh God, between 50 and 70 hours a week, I feel. Um, especially trying to churn out work for the Affordable Art Fair. And I realized the other day when these all came back from the framer, like I have not even done a vlog episode about this series of work. I looked back on my last episode that I'd put out and it was like with my original work that I did Casper. So I apologize for not keeping you guys informed, um, but I wanted to take this opportunity to just welcome you back to my mailing list, um, my studio, and I'm still here. I'm still as social. I'm still welcoming you all to come in and have a coffee with me. I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been really busy painting. Um, but let's talk about these um, excavated landscapes. So these ones here are set to go to the Affordable Art Fair. Um, and these works, I have to be honest with you, they're really not made to be looked at, especially not on a video. Um, so these works are made to be experienced. Um, they are works that will completely devour you the closer that you get. So they are perfectly imperfect, a little bit like me <laughs> and a little bit like my practice. Um, so as most of you already know, my studio is up above the paint shop um, and that hasn't changed, I've just taken over more space again. Sorry, uncle. It's gonna keep going. I keep saying I'm gonna build a whole new mezzanine level. I just need to win the million bucks, but that's okay. Um, if you guys purchase all my work, I'll be that much closer. Um, but this work here, excavated landscapes. Let's talk about these a little bit. So this is a process of strategic building up of many, 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 many liters of paint. Then what I do is I go through this ritualistic, what is now a ritual, this burial that I do where I coat the whole surface in a final coat. It really is quite performative and ritualistic. It's like me um, breathing for the first time because I am not a strategic thinker. Like I am a little bit of a rainbow unicorn at the best of times. So for me to think very strategically about the layering and the colors and the composition, by the time I get to the end of layering up those final layers of paint, I am, I am exhausted. I am absolutely shattered and um, like in a good way, just because I've put everything out. But my brain goes to mush at that stage, especially when I'm working on so many paintings at once. So at the point that I coat it all over and bury it, as much as it's, a complete risk, um, like I could potentially be covering over, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks worth of paint and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for nothing. But when I coat it over, it's like I get to breathe for the first time again because I'm really ready to coat it over, like I'm a bit exhausted and I'm really ready to see the work with new eyes. 
So when I code it over, it looks like a blank panel. It just looks completely blank. I put it to the side to cure and then when I put it back up on the easel, I kind of revisit the work with a completely different headspace again. And I really have forgotten, for the most part, what is underneath. Like, I can see basic structure underneath because of the texture in it, but I can't really remember which colours are where. And so, when I begin excavating, I kind of, I, I pick a point of the painting that I think is going to create a, an interesting focal point, and then I kind of work it out from there. So, I find that these paintings in particular, and a lot of the ones I've been doing lately, are very much, um, very much about going deep. That, like, I'm often standing on a tall mountain looking down into a valley, or up on a rock face looking across a valley, or like on the edge of a cliff looking over some plains. Like, I'm interested in what goes down. Um, and that's really what this process is all about. It's about excavating back to the bones of the original composition, but doing it in a way that I'm re-curating the entire painting again. Um, so when it comes to this work, I really welcome people treating this work as an experience in themselves. So, I often see people, it's funny, like, still to this day, like, this work has been out on the outside walls a bit. And I see people seriously beeline towards the work without even realising they're kind of doing it. It's like it's like a magnet. And then they get their nose about an inch from the panel. And then without them realising, their hands, like, start... <laughs> taking a walk across the surface. And in the normal art world, we'd say, don't touch an artwork. And I'm like, hell yes, I got the experience. Um, but seriously, I welcome that. And then, you know, they're working their hands across the panel and then all of a sudden they turn around and they go, oh shit, I'm so sorry for touching your work. I really shouldn't be doing that. And I go right ahead, go right ahead. Because at that point, I know it's a good work. So. Yeah, what am I saying? Come on in. Come and be seduced by the work. Come and touch the work. Come and be devoured by the work. Um, and hopefully this work will then go off on an adventure of its own. Um, like I said, I've done all of these kind of for the affordable art fair, but obviously if something sells beforehand, you pee. Um, you can always put deposits down on things and stuff. But yeah, I guess I'm jumping back in to say, stay tuned because I haven't disappeared. I've just been burying myself in the process and excavating my way back to sanity, if that makes sense. Um, but yes, I will try and put this out to you guys on the mailing list. And hopefully I'll be able to use elements of this video for social media as well, because that's the part I'm really failing at at the moment. Um, I'm finding it very hard to juggle motherhood, creativity, and social media admin. So let's see, let's see how it goes. So that's why you haven't been receiving many emails, but um, yes, we get better, I'm learning. Hopefully I'll see you all at the Affordable Art Fair, and if not, Send me emails, send me feedback, give me a phone call. I love a good text message. Um, I have a new website. That's part of what I was talking to you all about. Okay, I have a brand new website. It is www.corinnemorrison.com and my name is spelt terribly. Blame my parents. K O R Y N N. Morrison spelt normal. Um, but that is the new website, it's officially live, it's still a work in progress as all websites are, um, but I have a really cool commission button on it. So if you click the commission button, it takes you through to the commission forms and if you have been umming and ahhing, um, I will be taking on more commissions as of, ooh, um, as of, when am I taking on more commissions? 
probably after June. Um, but there can always be a waiting list. It's quite all right. Um, hopefully see you all at the Affordable Art Fair. Oh, and that's the other thing. I'm not there under the Corinne Morrison banner. Um, I'll be at the Affordable Art Fair under the Femme Collective banner. Um, so it will be me and it will also be uh, Rebecca Trakowski. Uh, and I'm so sorry if I didn't pronounce her name right. Sorry, Rebecca, if you're watching this. And Marie Pohl. Both of them incredible, incredible artists. So privileged to be a part of this female, powerful initiative. And um, yeah, we will see you at the Affordable Art Fair Femme Collective.